Hello and welcome to this video on parameter constraints in the M Plus software. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate statistical methods including factor analysis, structural equation modeling, multi-level modeling and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter, as well as courses that I offer for Quantfish. In this video, I want to talk about parameter constraints in factor analysis and structural equation modeling, and more specifically, how to implement constraints in the M Plus software. Constraints or parameter restrictions are something that confuses many people who are new to structural equation modeling and factor analysis and they wonder, do I need to put in constraints? When would I put in constraints? What does this mean? Which constraints may be implemented by a given software by default? So which parameters are already restricted? What is the difference between equality constraints and parameter fixations. Those are all things that I want to discuss here with regard to the M plus software. And I want to do this based on a simple two-factor confirmatory factor analysis model, which you can see here. So you can see this is a two-factor CFA model for four variables where the first two variables y1 and y2 measure factor f1 and the last two variables y3 and y4 measure the second factor f2. And so in M plus, a confirmatory factor analysis model is specified by simply naming the factors here the way you want, like here I, you, I chose f1 and f2, and then you use the by statement to indicate the indicators of each factor. So factor f1 is measured by one y1 and y2, and factor f2 is measured by y3 and y4. Now let's take a look first of all which constraints or parameter restrictions and plus implements by default and why before I show you how you can implement user defined restrictions and constraints including parameter fixations and or parameter equality constraints. So let's run this model and take a look at the M plus output. we scroll down we can see that this model fits the data very well so we can interpret the output you can see the chi-square test of model fit here is not statistically significant the p-value is 0.7179 so this is a very well fitting two-factor model for those four variables now when we scroll down you can see in the model results section where you find the unstandardized parameter estimates in m plus that the first factor loading, which is given here under by for F1, is exactly 1.0. And you can see furthermore that it has a standard error of zero as well as a 999 uh, printed here for both the Z statistic, the estimate divided by its standard error, which yields a Z statistic for a test of significance. And then also the p-value is given as 999. 999 in M plus means NA, not applicable. And that's because this parameter has no standard error. Now, why does this parameter estimate have no associated standard error because it's not an estimate. It's a fixed parameter. So this loading was already constrained or restricted automatically by M plus without us having to implement a constraint. The reason is that for factor identification, at least one factor loading needs to be fixed to a non-zero value or we need to fix the factor variance directly. And so the default in M plus is that in order to identify the scale, the units of measurement of the factor, a factor loading is fixed to one, one for each factor and specifically the first one is chosen. So it's a marker indicator approach that M plus uses by default to identify factor models and structural equation models with latent variables. If you didn't want that, then you'd have to override that constraint and I will show you how you can do that in just a second. So 
This already shows you that there are constraints already in the model by default that are needed to identify the model. You can see that the same is done for the first uh, indicator of the second factor F2. This loading likewise is fixed at one, has no standard error, no test statistic because there's no standard error for a fixed parameter because it's not estimated. So those are two obvious, so to say, explicit constraints that are already in the model automatically. Now there are more constraints already in the model that are more implicit in nature. So for example, M plus assumes by default that there are no cross loadings. So all the cross loadings are implicitly fixed to zero, meaning the variables Y1 and Y2 do not have loadings on F2. And also the the variables y3 and y4 do not have loadings on f1. That's not even shown in the output, but that's also a constraint, so to say. That's also a restriction that these loadings are fixed to zero. The covariance between the two factors is freely estimated as a free parameter in M plus by default. That's not the case in all structure equation modeling programs, but M plus assumes by default that you want to allow the covariance between factors in a CFA, which is usually the case. You can see that the factor variance is here unconstrained because the marker indicator approach was chosen and not the approach of fixing the variances. I'll show you in a little bit how you can change that if you wanted to constrain the factor variances rather than the loadings, then that would look different. Another restriction here is that the error variances uh, or the error terms, excuse me, um, for the indicators are not allowed to correlate. So the residual variances are all freely estimated, but the error terms in the CFA are uncorrelated. And again, that's something that's an implicit constraint that you cannot see here directly because um, it's not printed as zero, but all those error covariances are implicitly set to zero. And also the factors are not allowed to correlate with the error terms, which means also all those potential parameters are implicitly fixed to zero. Now let's talk more about user-defined restrictions in M+, going back to our input file. I told you that one thing that sometimes we like to do is we sometimes like to go the route of fixing factor variances to one rather than fixing one loading per factor. And so that could be the case, for example, when you have indicators that have very different metrics, where the indicators have very different units of measurement. So let's say one is measured on a scale from 100 to 1000 and the other one is measured on a scale from negative 10 to positive 10, then there might be difficulties in um, finding the factor variances sometimes when, um, when the indicators have such difficult different loadings or different um, units of measurement. And so M plus might then run into convergence problems. And that can sometimes be mitigated by going the equivalent so say alternative route of fixing the factor variances, constraining the factor variances to one rather than constraining one loading. So then if you want to do that, the first thing that you have to do is you have to override the M plus constraint, the implicit constraint that this loading and this loading will automatically be fixed to one. So how do you do that? How do you override the M plus default? You do this by putting a little star here or asterisk symbol, then this loading will be free. So a star in M plus always means a parameter is free, freely estimated, and you could assign a starting value behind an asterisk as well if you wanted to. But in principle, this star simply means there's a free parameter. So if this parameter was previously fixed implicitly by default, then now it will be free. So with that in place, both loadings will now be freely estimated on each factor, however, in the current state, this model would be under identified because it wouldn't be clear how the metric of the factor is defined. And so now if we don't want to constrain the loadings, then we have to constrain the factor variances. And this can be done by uh, uh, printing or by typing the variable names of the latent variables and then putting at one behind each one, F1 at one, F2 at one and then a semicolon and now the 
factor variances are constrained. So when you fix a parameter to a specific value, so when it's a constraint that involves fixing a parameter, then you use the add symbol in M+. So let's take a look at how this turns out in the what that does to our output. First of all, we can see that the model fits exactly the same. The chi-square value is the same and the p-value is the same because these models are equivalent. So it's in most cases, it is arbitrary whether you fix one loading per factor or the factor variances, the standardized parameter solution will be the same in either case. The unstandardized solution will be different because now the loadings are both freely estimated and so that also then changes the loading of the second indicator. But it does not affect these the standardized loadings and other standardized parameters such as the factor correlation. So here you can see now both loadings are freely estimated. They both have a standard error now and a test statistic because the first one is no longer constrained, but instead the factor variances are now constrained to one and now they don't have a standard error or a test statistic. So that's the alternative way to identify a factor model by directly fixing the factor variances. Now, what other constraints can you implement in M plus. Another type of constraint are so-called equality constraints. And so equality constraints we often use when we have, for example, a multi-group analysis or when we have a longitudinal analysis and we want to test for measurement equivalence or measurement invariance across time. Measurement invariance testing comes with parameter equality constraints because we want to hold loadings equal across time, for example, or across groups but we don't necessarily want to fix them. So we don't necessarily want to fix all the loadings to one, for example, but rather we want to set them equal. So we want them to be estimated to the same value across time or across groups, but that doesn't mean that we know which value they should take on. So we're still um, interested in estimating those loadings freely, but we want them to be equal, okay? And so. I can demonstrate this here, even though this is not a multi-group model. One hypothesis that we um, maybe want to test is whether our loadings are the same uh, across uh, the factors. So for example, let's say maybe this is a longitudinal model where F1 represents the scores at time one and F2 represents the true scores for the same construct at time two. For example, let's say the longitudinal relationship between depression scores, so how stable are depression scores across time. And then if we wanted to test for equivalence of the loadings across time, we would put a little um, uh, label or number in parentheses behind each loading. So I'm labeling the first loading with the parameter label one or number one. And then here I'm gonna use a different label um, two for the second loading. And then I'm, I'm gonna put the same labels for the second factor so that the corresponding loadings will be held equal across time, assuming that this is a longitudinal CFA. So here now you can see that Y1 will be given or a loading will be estimated for Y1 that's the exact same as the loading for Y3 even though we're not fixing this parameter. So those are equality constraints where the parameter is constrained to be equal but not constrained to a specific value. So it's not a fixed parameter. It will still get a standard error and a test statistic. And then the same thing for the second loading, Y2, which also will be freely estimated, but it will be constrained to be the same value for Y2 and Y4, okay? So that's how you um, can impose parameter equality constraints, for example, on loadings. The principle is the same for other parameters such as intercepts, factor means, residual variances, and other parameters provide a label, it can either be a number or it could be a label such as um, writing lambda one or loading one, load one, you could also type that if you wanted to do that and then call this one load one so that it'll be the same. Okay, so let's take a look at how that
um, turns out in M plus. You can see now the chi-square is different and now it's not looking good, right? So now it's much, much larger, 71.897, and it has three degrees of freedom because we're saving two parameters. Now these constraints make the model more restrictive because we're estimating two fewer loadings since they are held equal. But this gain in degrees of freedom also comes with an increase in the chi-square that here is very substantial, indicating that these restrictions are not acceptable. So this model fits worse than the previous model with freely estimated loadings. So meaning it's not supported, the hypothesis that the loadings are the same. You can see also the RMSEA is not looking good and CFI and TLI are also suboptimal and so is the SRMR index here. You can see the loadings were constrained to be equal for corresponding variables. So Y1 and Y3 have the same loading, the same standard error, the same test statistic, and so does Y2. 0.813 here, 0.813 here, same standard error, same test statistic, same p-value. So this is how you implement equality constraints. In this case, they are not accepted here. They are not um, acceptable by M plus, so, or for this model. So in summary, in order to fix a parameter to a specific value, you use the at symbol in M plus. Here we're fixing the variances. In order to set parameters free that were previously constrained, you use a star symbol. And in order to implement equality constraints, you use the same label for corresponding parameters that you want to set equal. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about how to implement constraints in the M plus software when estimating factor models or structural equation models. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to check out the description for additional resources and I'll see you next time.